Well, I just thought I'd keep you updated as to a few things with my seeds and sowing and stuff. Last autumn, late in autumn, I picked up a few meddlers and this is one here, obviously it's been left over winter, it's dried out. Um, I took some seeds out of one just a couple of hours ago. Um, that's what they look like after they're overwintered. Now apparently if you plant them when they're still green, but ripe, so that'd be about November-ish, before they've gone really, really soft ripe, they have erratic um, germination. Now this may well be my first baby meddler. It's been left outside um, in a pot and others in a tray so you could quite happily probably sow about 20 of these and maybe only one would work but the thing to do is persistence with me so I'll let you know how it develops. When it first came up it looked like a bean and I thought oh goodness it's a bean but it could turn out to be a medlet and if it is one I'll let you know they don't um, go true to the parent though from seeds so you can't get too excited they say that about a lot of seeds um, that's why I, sp I suppose people do cuttings isn't it my wild blackberries were ruined because I used comfrey to fertilise them last year. The berries tasted rank, to be honest. So this year I'm having to completely um, change what I'm doing for fertiliser. I'm worried that they've actually that's turned the berries, so I'm going to put some new plants in. This is just basically, you can see it's off a side branch, and it's like a, a branch itself. I'm going to see if it roots just in water. Of course I know that they do root very easily, but I just wanted to know if it will root off, off a little side branch. I've got it here in this little goblet. Um, and I've had quite a lot of success with other things over winter, including passion flowers rooting, just little cuttings in water. This is a passion flower cutting that started originally just as a little three inch cutting taken off the parent plant. Um, places like Morrison's sell them. And mine don't survive over winter on the allotment, so it's one of those things where you've got to remember to take your own cutting. Like, I would find that oregano, the fancy forms of oregano, let's say um, pineapple, the pineapple flavoured one, they don't overwinter well here either. But I always forget to take cuttings, but never again, because I just love passion flowers. Um, I've got about six or seven cuttings of these now, and they've all rooted properly. In my last update, I mentioned that I usually rely on the squirrels to, to get my baby hazelnuts seedlings and these are some I actually planted myself outside but I've had to rescue them because the squirrels are onto them straight away the squirrels were digging away um, so I brought these indoors and I noticed that they weren't doing too well in the compost outside it was too wet and saturated so I brought them inside I'd found they had actually sprouted so it looks like you can do hazelnuts you just have to remove these sort of they have a husk around them and get them planted quickly in autumn. And they seem to need this overwintering, um, but then you need to rescue them from the squirrels. So I've got a number of these. I've got, uh, I think it's four of them indoors. One, two, three. Yeah, and there's another one there. Um, oh, that's the ki one of the kiwis that's been kept indoors all the time, molly coddled. This is a self fertile kiwi. Um, this one here I actually got from b and q I've had two of them on a special deal. I left them outside and I thought they'd died, but the roots um, filled the pots. So obviously they're not very good at cold. So with these I'm wondering whether or not they should probably be grown in pots um, and then protected over winter or brought indoors. Again, not sure. I, don't, I mean, any advice anyone's got about kiwis, I'd be very happy. But this one survived and it's brother or sister whatever is outside on the drive that's doing a lot better than this one but this one I thought was dead but no quite a few of my plants have been like that this year um, including some prunus ones which I've just about thrown out only to find that underneath there's a couple of buds so watch it yourself I find by smelling by taking them out from repotting smelling roots I can tell whether they rotted or not this is what I was saying to you about passion flower um, this is just a very small cutting as regards the type of cuttings I normally do and as you can see well I've, I've had it going for about I'd say a good probably six weeks so that takes me back over winter and already as you can see 
um, it tends to be under a bud, just under a bud there, and it starts to throw out roots. Um, they can be run really sort of rampant on your allotment, but I quite like that to cover ugly areas where I've got screens, particularly reed screens, um, where you've got neighbours around you, if you've always got people at the back of you chatting, etc., and you want to have a nice screen, instead of having to go to B&M or Home Bargains and buy one of these fake screens, just get one of these, the Passion Flowers, they're brilliant. These are five Glaskins Perpetual all of the seeds came up in this case. I believe they germinated after about probably 10 days, 10, 11 days. I didn't sow many other rhubarb seeds because obviously where I am it's better to get the crowns. And again, like I said before about seeds, you have to be careful they don't always go true to the parents. Um, however, seed suppliers do say that they are got from vigorous stock, so I'll, I'll let you know the jury's out on this one. But these are Glaskin's Perpetual Rhubarb Seedlings. So, among the seeds I'll be sowing this year, and I'm not going mad really because I need things that are low maintenance, particularly if we have another drought, I'm going to have a go at some of these, my own seeds I've collected, Uchikuri Squash Onion. Um, and also, I like, really like these little tiny tomatoes. Uh, the seeds came from a propagator packet and that came from Aldi and I did do a video on it so basically that I'm gonna, uh, these are what I collected from the actual tomatoes that I grew myself I'm going to have a go at them and I did say I'm going to do these as well Globe Artichoke I got two of the corns or crowns whatever you'd call it on discount one's definitely survived that's in my kitchen window and I'm going to try sowing the seeds they say Really, I mean, I'm two weeks behind everyone in the south of England here. We have to wait two weeks up here in the Midlands. So I'm going to have a go over the next week or so with these. And of course, as I've already shown you, these are the meddlers. Strange looking things, aren't they, meddlers? This year's big success on my garden, where the plants are very crowded, has been liquid seaweed concentrate. And I've been round, I'd say every three or four days, and I've given my plants a really good drenching of the roots, not on the flowers, not on the foliage, but just around the roots. And everything around me, even my sort of little tubs, my flowers and my herbs, as you can see there, um, have done fantastically well. Um, yeah. And the blossom this year has been the best. Whether it's down to my liquid seaweed or not, I don't know. If you like your scented plants, then there's nothing much more beautiful scented than jasmine. It's that beautiful perfume fragrance you get when you walk into someone's garden and you wonder what the smell was. It's often jasmine. Um, mine's gone, grown unruly on the allotment. Um, didn't prune it in the autumn. We found loads of ladybirds hiding in it, so unfortunately. Um, well, luckily it's warmer so, that, so they can probably move on. We didn't harm any of them. So basically, as you can see from this, these cuttings I've taken, some of them have already got roots on them, it's, and I've got it growing outside my house as well. It runs up top. I've seen a lot of warnings on seed packets that you shouldn't let the temperature go below a certain amount, say 15 degrees, 12 degrees, and I haven't got a cold frame or um, outdoor propagator. So what I've done is left mine here in the sunshine to warm the soil up. I'll sow my seeds and I'll keep them um, indoors or what I do is put plastic bags on them um, outside and keep them in the sun as much as possible. If there's frost you're going to have to either bring them in or keep them covered. Um, there, one of my favourite little plants, it's some really ugly duckling things but it's a rock rose. If you ever go up to the Midlands in England or around the sort of areas where I live you should see this growing on around on hedgerows um, and it's native it's rock rose it throws out hundreds and hundreds of beautiful little flowers and they come in different colours this one's a white one little white roses um, it's an unruly plant and it will also borrow off other plants and climb up them so, like it'll climb up a red currant plant or anything you can find in a hedge to show to show off it's a real show off rock rose my canemelies, Japanese quince, I love the flowers on these and I use them, use quinces, you can make quince jams and jelly. These ones haven't quite been pollinated yet, 
um, its sister plant had orange flowers and that's more advanced, it seems to be a couple of weeks ahead but quince grow extremely well I just love these beautiful flowers and also the fact you get some fruit from them wild strawberries have started flowering now uh, end of March so should get a bit of a crop this year I'll just take the odd one and put it on breakfast cereal it looks like the crab apples seeds that I put in over winter have come up these are crab apple seedlings I've put them into improved pollination of apple trees on the allotment so I will put some crab apples there and here's one I made earlier. This is a crab apple seedling, which is about oh, it's coming up for its third year. They're very slow-growing crab apple seedlings. In these tubs, I put some slow seeds, and I also this is where my meddler also will put some. I've also put some meddler seeds in there. And as you can see, there are other cuttings here. There's rose, and of course, I've got some more hazels, and also thorned blackberry. Don't forget that your thorned blackberry grows on young wood. It's always worthwhile taking lots of young cuttings and propagating it because the old parent plants will wear out quite quickly and in the hedgerows in the countryside that's what happens um, when they cut the hedges. Um, you can cut them right down blackberries and they'll grow, they'll bounce back at you so I keep taking cuttings as I have here. I never have to worry about propagating pond plant cuttings. This seem to spread like wildfires. You can see these are a pond plant and they grow about four or five feet high. Elder, as you can see there, <coughs> pardon my voice, elder seems to um, propagate extremely well just from stick cuttings. When I pruned mine, um, I did a video on that, and I'll just show you there, there's some, cu some stick cuttings from elder. They've taken very well. Red currant also seems to take well from cuttings. I put a cut just um, below a bud um, and put it quite deep in the soil. It's overwintered and I'm pretty sure this, this is rooted. I took loads of cuttings from my honeyberry. I didn't get any honeyberries last year only because of the drought. They did start forming, they went green and then they all just like prunes shriveled in the heat wave of the uh, I think it was 95 in the shade in the UK. Um, in the sunlight, obviously even hotter, probably well over 100, but that's how we measure the, the weather. But I took about 20 cuttings, so I'll keep them more shady this summer to let you know if we get any um, honeyberries. And, of course, like many of you, I'm having a go at figs. I've only had a couple of figs. Nothing to shout at home about, not ep one yet. Um, but the cuttings keep coming. This one is one of my most successful cuttings here and again of course I'll be pinching it out as per instructions from you wonderful YouTubers. The rhubarb crowns which I got from Wilco's in the garden centre which includes the red valentine and of course um, my Canadian red, I got two Canadian reds actually and also uh, an early red um, these seem to be doing extremely well in the garden. I'll just keep these in the shade. Going to keep them here at home. You can, of course, grow rhubarb in tubs if you wish. Um, it just grows okay on the clay soil. And uh, I just keep feeding it with the liquid seaweed. It's a hungry, hungry plant. The last little seedling I've got here. This is grown from seed. This is a quince sidonia. And I, this little beautiful little plant was grown from a quince, which I opened up from my quince sidonia in the back garden. It doesn't always make it through to quinces because the birds love the blossom. Um, it's actually lovely, lovely blossom to eat for birds, particularly sparrows, but I don't mind. Occasionally I get quinces. One year I did get a huge crop of quinces from it, very large, and you can use them in cooking jams and jellies, and etc. But this is my little seedling. Last but not least, I've got a wonderful pack from Wilco's of these boxes, hedges. One year they sold loads of hedging plants and I bought as many as I could, which included um, these boxes, hedges, and also sloes, blackthorns, and um, others as well. Sorry, I just forgot there was hornbeam, so I basically have them all over the place in the allotment in my garden. So if you do see packs of hedging plants, don't turn your nose up at them because they can be used for little specimens as well. And of course these can be used in topiary. By doing plenty of weeding around my fruit trees and pruning correctly, um, I've got a nice good 
show of blossom this year so hopefully the bumblebees will like it today and the flowers look as if they're mature bumblebees will be attracted to this and hopefully will then fly between the different plum trees to cross pollinate them as you can see this plum blossom is coming towards the end of its life and I'm relying on bumblebees going about 12 feet between my different varieties of plum trees in the garden and hopefully there will be a good fruit set it does help if you feed the tree I've been using liquid seaweed I get it as a concentrate and you make it up dilute and away you go you can also do a bit of pollination with little paint brushes yourself so as I did last year I should be going around with my little brush you need to brush off the yellow pollen that's on the outside and in the middle of the flower you might just be able to see it there is one uh, you see it better on the lower one of these two um, the, which is the female part of the flower and that's the stigma that's a sticky bit at the top of it and then it goes down the tube um, into stigma the style and then finally into the ovary um, most plum trees unless they're the wilder ones like damsons aren't actually self fertile hope you have a good time in your gardens and you're successful and let's hear more of that sound the bumblebee then you know things are being pollinated see you next time